Stephen says, the SNP have an agenda of anarchy, mob rule, and will do anything to keep Scotland on edge. It fits the narrative of divisive politics. Because, as many of you know, what happened last last um, Thursday, Thursday the um, 13th, the Home Office, which is the British um, government, were removing a couple of uh, overstayers, people who were not entitled to stay in the country. And they had to essentially send a van round to pick these guys up. Now, that's not normal practice. Cause what would normally happen is you get a letter from the Home Office to turn yourself in to the authorities. And most people, virtually all people, will turn themselves in when they get the letter. And especially if they're advised by their lawyer that we've exhausted all the possibilities. So what you have to do now is just turn up at the authorities um, and hand yourself in and you'll be taken to the detention center and then you'll be removed from the country. And that's what happens in most cases. But if you're advised by your lawyer, as possibly these people were, just to sit tight and don't do anything and let's create a scene here, then what has to happen is that the enforcement van has to come round, chap your door, and take you away on the street. And so make no mistake, these two people, I'm, and what, these two people knew what was coming, okay? They, because they will have had multiple letters to hand themselves in peacefully and uh, without a fuss, but they chose not to. They chose to create a scene. So that's what then happened. Now, as we've written earlier, there's nowhere else, basically, in Scotland where they could have pulled off that stunt, uh, which what they pulled off in Kenmuir Street, because Kenmuir Street is a perfect mix of uh, largely students who, at this stage, are uh, not even in college because of the COVID lockdown. So they're all hanging about, got nothing to do. And it's a certain type of student as well that stays there. And of course, there's also a perfect mix of SNP councillors who run that area and also various ethnic minorities as well, often just getting on with their own business. So it's it's a very unusual area that Govan Hill, which is Nicola Sturgeon's constituency as well, which might also be a factor here. So it's a perfect mix where you could possibly do what they managed to do on Thursday last. There's not really any other areas in Scotland uh, outside of the of, of a big city like Glasgow or perhaps Edinburgh where you could pull a stunt like that off. But the SNP managed to pull that stunt off and of course they were delighted to do so and they prevented two people who needed to go back to wherever it was that they were told uh, they had to return to they prevented them from uh, being taken away at this uh, at this moment. Now, what that did, of course, was it set a very, very bad precedent. Now, Brian says, why didn't they just turn up in a plane car to remove these people? It's, that's a good point. I, I don't understand that as well. Why do they have to make a song and dance about it? Uh, turning up with an a, a van that says, you know, immigration enforcement and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not clear. You'd think they could there could be less um, there could be uh, less obtrusive methods of doing that, wouldn't you? Hello to Amber. How are you from Bath? So, so basically, they turned up. They turned up, and it would be known that they were turning up at that time. Okay, because the lawyers would have been would know. And that the lawyers would be able to tip off whoever they wanted to tip off if they chose to do so. They could have done that. I'm not saying that they did that, but they would they would be aware that something was going to be happening to these people uh, within a certain frame of time. And so basically what you had was all the usual suspects pictured there, okay? All the usual SNP councillors that we see at all these events all the usual so-called human rights lawyers that we see at these events, all the local um, 
political activists that we see at all of these events. And, you know, we've been watching these people for at least 25 years, okay, when all this started to come together, when large numbers of immigrants and asylum seekers and refugees were coming into Glasgow. But 25 years ago, a whole network was established, and it's the same people, it's the same people who were doing their thing back then who are doing their thing now. Um, I won't obviously mention any names, but this is the same names, the same organizations still around, and they've all made very well-paid careers for themselves in the endless immigration and asylum and human rights industry which exists in Scotland. You know, I did, I did law as a mature student back in the early 2000s, and I realized that if you got into immigration law or so-called human rights law, it was an absolute bottomless pit of money because you have clients arriving at your door every single day in streams, in droves, in lines of people. I mean, if you're servicing the immigration and asylum industry, you will make a mint because it's like endless, endless clients who are just coming in every day. And they're all be your wages are being paid for by the Great British taxpayer, of course. So because it's like all on legal aid and things like that. So it's just a, it's an absolute sinecure. That's what I'm looking for. If you can become a human rights lawyer in Scotland, sinecure, sinecure. You have endless clients anyway. Anyway, so these people done very well for themselves in that uh, industry, the immigration industry. And it was all them. It was all these people there. And, of course, um, they were able to, it, because of that area, they were able to get a group of people together to make a song and dance about what was going on. But what was most uh, disturbing was the reaction of both Nicola Sturgeon and Hamza Yusuf. Now, Nicola Sturgeon put out uh, a tweet and she said, well, she put out several tweets that day, given us the misfortune of her opinion. And she said that the deeper problem here is, quote, an appalling asylum and immigration policy. Now, of course, asylum and immigration is set by the British Home Office and as somebody was commenting to me earlier, it has to be one of the most lenient immigration and asylum policies in the world. I mean, Britain is a soft touch when it comes to immigration and asylum. I mean, far too soft, far too soft. It's incredibly soft. I mean, it's wet lettuce soft on immigration and asylum. But to listen to Nicola Sturgeon and Hamza Yusuf, you'd think this was like 19... 30s Germany or something like that. Uh, I mean, it's but literally, it's it's wet lettuce soft on immigration and asylum. The United Kingdom is, uh, and that's why people are arriving every day, hundreds a week in in rubber dinghies across the English Channel. You know, if Britain was hard on immigration and asylum, as arguably it should be a lot harder. These people wouldn't be arriving in these little boats, okay? The fact that they're actually being ferried across the channel, essentially by the border ferry, as we call them, not the border force, the border ferry. They're being ferried into the country by the border ferry. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know. Britain is wet lettuce soft on immigration and asylum. And so there's, there's no appalling immigration and asylum policy, to quote Nicola Sturgeon's words. Um, although some people argue it should certainly be a lot harder than it is. So we're very, very lenient. So straight away she's talking nonsense, talking utter rubbish, utter rubbish. Um, but she's trying to set up a distinction between Scotland, the land of um, unlimited tolerance and open borders, and she's trying to set up... A, a, a distinction between what she wants Scotland to be like and what she imagines the United Kingdom is like, which is some sort of harsh regime. And then, of course, um, Hamza Yusuf wades in as well. Well, she went on with another tweet and she said, the day when immigration policy is the responsibility of the Scottish Parliament can't come soon enough. 
Well, we'll get to what the consequences of that would be and how, in fact, that's in, how, in fact, what she's just done this last week probably means immigration and asylum will never be devolved to Scotland, thank goodness. But she obviously wants that to come to Scotland. And Hamza Youssef waded in as well with with his with his thoughts. And he he did a video and he put it out and he said, quote, let me be clear. The hostile environment, whatever he means by that, created by the UK government is not welcome here. Is not welcome here. In other words, British immigration policy, such as it is, is not welcome in Scotland. And so this is the so-called justice minister who's responsible for laws in Scotland saying that British laws, the British Home Office laws on immigration and asylum are not welcome here. What an inflammatory as well as downright ignorant thing for him to say publicly. So we responded on Twitter and we said, the Justice Minister is basically saying that UK law is not welcome in Scotland, thereby implying, implying we should not obey these laws and only obey laws created by himself and the Scottish Parliament. Dangerous and unacceptable messaging from someone in his position of responsibility. And, you know, we were talking earlier about how divisive the SNP is. That's the Justice Minister. The Justice Minister has to be so careful not to alienate vast elements of the population. You have to be, you have to be diplomatic about these things. You can't be saying that UK law essentially is not welcome in Scotland. That's that's the sort of thing like a, a student would do, a 20-year-old student or something at some uh, student union rally uh, on on the matter. I mean, that's not the that's not the the diplomatic attitude of a justice secretary in the United Kingdom. That's utterly, utterly wrong for him to have said those things. So what's all this meaning? What it's meaning is it's giving the green light. The SNP is giving the green light to what happened. It's not go it's not standing there and going, yes, go on yourself. More more mobs. But it's given the green light to it. It's not condemning it. He should have said, look. Whatever you may think about immigration and asylum, the Home Office have got a job to do. So long as we're part of the United Kingdom, you have to let them do their job because it's my responsibility as Justice Secretary to ensure that all laws here in Scotland are properly enforced. You know, he could have done that and we'd have all gone, well, yeah, you know, uh, we, that's, that's fair enough. But no, he has to really choose a side and, and, and come out strongly against British law being enforced, which is to come out strongly against everybody who believes that British law on these matters should still be enforced in Scotland. So extremely dangerous and unacceptable messaging from someone in his position of responsibility. So what that has done, of course, is it has given the green light to the Scottish nationalists. And they're kind of almost like you know, getting awfully excited. I was going to use a, a crudity there about how excited they are, but I'm not going to. But they are that excited. Um, some some person who gets to write thousands of words in the uh, Sunday National on Sunday was saying that the idea of spontaneous, peaceful, direct action is an example of radical, they love that word, radical self-organisation as it's a model for a new second phase of the independence movement. All right. Okay, great. So you've excited all these borderline fruitcakes who write for the Sunday Herald into thinking now that this sort of behaviour is now a tactic to create Scottish independence. Well done, Hamza Yusuf. Maybe that was your plan from the very beginning. Um, however, here's a message of hope, okay? 
that attitude, that sort of law-breaking mob rule, if you want to call it that attitude, is not going to appeal to Middle Scotland, okay? Middle Scotland, that vast swathe of normal people that you will have to appeal to if you want to win your argument one way or the other. So Middle Scotland is not impressed by confrontations with the police, okay? So if your role, if your um, plan now is to devise confrontations with the police in order to get your way, then I'm afraid that's not going to appeal to Middle Scotland. And you will, if you want to go down the route of being the party of the mob, then you're not going to appeal to Middle Scotland when it comes to the crunch, when it comes to the vote at the end of the day. So in that way, he's, he's made a bit of a fool of himself. And another two points that have come out of this is that so long as Scotland is part of the United Kingdom, which it shall always be, but what it means is if we, if we have the SNP or any of their sympathisers in charge, then it's, we simply cannot devolve immigration and asylum to the SNP because what 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 it would mean is that it, when it, given those powers it will exercise them in an open border manner it will exercise them in a way in which it's not prepared to enforce laws so you, you can't devolve immigration and asylum to the Scottish Parliament not now because we have a Justice Secretary who believes that the laws that we have on immigration and asylum are not welcome. It will mean that he's only going to enforce open borders, which means that you can't have that within the United Kingdom. You know, it's like they've, they've really messed up on that because people denied entry to England will simply enter via Scotland's regime and then they'll enter England that way. Or those who are threatened of, of removal from England will simply just move up to Scotland where they're not going to get removed. So within a United Kingdom, you can't be devolving asylum and immigration to the SNP. And what it also means is that in the, if there were to be an independent Scotland, then a hard border would be necessary because the difference between the SNP's regime and that which exists in the rest of the what remained of the United Kingdom would be so different. There'd have to be a hard border between Scotland and the rest of the UK because Scotland would be effectively open to the entire world. Scotland would be effectively open to the entire world because that is that appears to be what Hamza Yusuf and Nicola Sturgeon want. Because they are essentially open border enthusiasts. Now, so the question which must be asked of them, and I, I'm just go, we're going to have our guest at 11 o'clock, so I'm just going to wind this up. But the question which must be asked is, do you, Hamza Youssef, do you, Nicholas Sturgeon, do you believe in border control at all? Our MSPs must be asking these people these questions. Because if you believe that Scotland has borders which need to be controlled, then you believe that they must be policed and you believe that those laws must be enforced. And if you believe those things, then you have to support the actions of the Home Office whenever the Home Office removes people from the country because it's simply... It's simply enforcing the immigration laws so they must be put on the spot Yusuf and Sturgeon must be put on the spot do you believe in borders at all or are you just like this open borders internationalist because if that's what you are then you have to level with us and tell us that but if you do believe that borders need to be controlled then you must believe that there will be laws that these laws will be policed and that these laws will be enforced. The only world in which the actions of the Home Office in Scotland are not welcome 
to use Hamza Yusuf's phrase, is a world where there are no border controls whatsoever in Scotland and everyone accepts that it's just a free for all. And if that's what Sturgeon and Hamza Yusuf want to see, then they need to level with us and they need to tell us that. Now, we've got a guest coming up at 11 o'clock. I, I wrote an article on the moral principles behind immigration control because immigration is an issue which can trip everybody up and so it's important to be working from a set of moral principles and many years ago 20 years ago I wrote an article the moral principles for a sustainable immigration program and I revised it a couple of years ago and it's on a force for goods website and we'll put that up there the link up there but it demonstrates to the world the, the moral principles from which I'm working from and from which a a government that wants to stay clean on this matter should be working from as well. And borders are moral and they are correct and they need to be enforced, mate. They need to be enforced. And if you want to stay here, then if you've been here for several years, then become a British citizen, you know. And then you'll have the perfect right to stay here, regardless of who you are. 